but can I just casually start working after all that chaos I caused? Nobody will try to kill me or anything? You just gotta kill them first. Good point. Astonishingly, I'm thinking pretty positively. Mr. Patel's despair, if that's the right word for it, has somehow given me a certain sort of courage. Not the same sort of courage I get with Pacifica and Anya, but it's still courage nonetheless. Yeah, I think I'll give it a shot. Does this town have a job search office or anything like that? Not that I know of, at least, but I guess that's more of Miss Pacifica's specialty to hear. Oh? What kind of work does Pacifica do anyway? It's kind of obvious what Anya does, but Pacifica's job is an enigma. It must be something important if she lives in such a big house. Pacifica seems like she could do anything, but what does she actually do? True, that sort of work is indeed one of my specialties, so that should help. Okay, let's give it our best, Sayako. Uh, okay. I should ask her now. It's better than finding out later that I don't even know something as basic as that. Let me help, too! Whoa, you spooked me. Hey, where'd you come from? I was hiding in the filthy sludge in your coffee cup. <laughs> oh, she's good. <laughs> Are you people okay? Perfectly okay. All I'm saying is that while I'm rooming with Sayako, I'm just a freeloader with nothing to do. Um... How much did you hear? She probably just got here. Um, Sayako? I get what Anya's trying to say. The reason for me getting a job would be to regain some personal space from Yoru. So it would defeat the point if she worked with me, wouldn't it? That's the point Anya's trying to make. Yeah, you could do something too. I hope we can both find a good place to work. Well, I only say that for my own sake. Your expressing a desire to work can imply a desire for independence. I can't just get in the way of that. In fact, I think I should be supportive of her. You sure? I'm sure. Whatever could you mean? I'm not that cruel. Okay, yeah, I think I was kind of cruel back at the church earlier, but you know what I mean. I get the feeling that Yoru would be quite good at handling interviews. Way better than me, anyway. I feel some sort of coarseness in my chest. Very well. A job for one and a job for two aren't that much different. I'll set you up before the day is done. So it'll be like a piece of coffee cake for you, then. I suppose? Hey, is she like that at home, too? Yeah. I feel for you. Yoru says something completely unrelated to the topic at hand, taking Pacifica and Anya aback, but they try to keep a conversation going. I find myself at my wit's end. It's not like I'm feeling left out or anything. It's just that this sort of banter takes me back. As my consciousness starts to drift, I look outside the window. There's a good view of the plaza, including the towering missile in the center of it. Maybe it's like a giant gravestone. The names of a thousand and twenty-four ghosts are etched upon that missile. The husk of a weapon of mass destruction that failed to carry out its mission. From where I'm seated, I can't see that part that has my name on it. Okay, I know you. You're the ninja girl. We even live in the same apartment complex. Pacifica said she'd set us up before the day is done. I thought she meant she'd get in touch with some contacts or something, but she even set us up a same-day interview. She's truly amazing. Um, is that so? Our prospective place of work is a cosplay shop on the outskirts of town. We're in the back room of that shop right now. The employee interviewing us is a girl with a somewhat husky voice. She seems kind of punkish, so I was really nervous at first. She has a very gentle, somewhat familiar way of talking, which is kind of relaxing. Yeah, haven't seen you around lately, though. You've been staying away from home or something? Anyway, you, on the other hand, I don't know your name. 
My name is Yoru. I got it as a birthday present. <laughs> I see, as a present, huh? Good for you. My name is Lauren. Call me Lo. Yep, it sure is good. Thanks, Lo. Lauren, or rather Lo, gets up from her seat. Now then, mm, let's see. First, I'll explain to you two how we bring in newly arrived stock and dispose of unsold stock. Yes, ma'am. Your follows Lo's lead and gets up. I get up as well, and then a bell rings. Now that I think about it, that must mean the store door opened. It made the same sound when we came in, after all. Oh, looks like we've got a customer for once. Um, Yoru, go greet them, or something. Aye, ma'am. Lo beckons me deeper into the shop. You sure about this? Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. It's much more fun to teach new recruits than it is to deal with customers. Lo peers into my brown eyes with her fair eyes. I can feel my heart throbbing, for various reasons. Wouldn't you agree? Her slightly husky voice really matches her fashion sense. I think it's fitting and beautiful. I wonder how I can become more like her. I agree. Totally agree. In any case, there's no way I could disagree with her. So, let's see. First of all, that box over there is newly arrived stock. Okay. And that box over there is unsold stock to be disposed of. You with me so far? Oh, question. Go ahead, ask away. Um, they're both empty, aren't they? Ah. Uh, yeah, I guess we rarely do receive new stock or dispose of unsold stock. Huh? Actually, now that you mention it, when was the last time we had either of those things? Maybe 9,999 years ago? Um... Yes. Sorry, can I ask another question? Are you sure this shop needs more workers? I can hear Lo gasp in realization. She closes her eyes, takes a deep breath, and then speaks slowly. Yeah, honestly, you're right. Business is so slow here, I've got plenty of downtime just working by myself. Then what do we do for work? Oh, sorry. Well, the manager seemed kind of frantic. Oh, uh, sorry, never mind that. I guess you can, like, clean and stuff. Okay. Things get kind of awkward after that, so we both fall quiet. I think Lo's trying to come up with some sort of work the two of us can do, but the fact that she's not saying anything probably means she can't think of anything. Um, I wonder how that customer is doing. Oh, right. Um, sorry. I don't know what to say, so I just nod vaguely. Thank you! Right as Lo and I get back to the storefront, Yor lets out a cheer loud enough to drown out even the store's loud background music. What? You actually sold something? No way, it's been ages since our last sale. I'm surprised, of course, but Lo is even more surprised. Is this store really that unpopular? What did you sell? It must have been that frilly thing, right? No, it was the automatic rifle and the bulletproof vest. I said, you look marvelous with them, and the customer bought them. I see, I see. I guess it's finally time we get some new stock. So, does it seem like it'll be tough working here? She actually said she realized that she's fully staffed already. I feel a little uncomfortable as I say that. I'm sure Yoru is quite employable as a customer service worker. I see. That's too bad. See you again sometime. Yeah, um, I'm really sorry about that. Feel free to drop by my room sometime, you two. But it looks like neither Yoru nor Lo seem to mind, so I guess it's all okay in the end. Be sure to turn the heater on. Um... Yeah, I'll put it on full blast. Should I say something? 
and play some good music, too. I just don't want to say something and have it turn out weird. I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to avoid you or anything, though on second thought I kind of am. Not in a bad way. Do I have the capability to convey such a nuanced thought? I can play a little piano, so I'll practice. I'd like to hear some stories from you, too. I don't know, Lower Self was considering hiring Yoru for a customer service job, but it seems she won't explain why she doesn't because of how obvious the reason is. Then again, they're both so kind that they'd probably explain it to me, no matter how obvious it is supposed to be. So should I ask? No, maybe not. Okay, let's make it a night to remember. Bye! Um, sorry we couldn't help. Thank you for your time. I conclude that these two have way better judgment than I do. So it doesn't make a difference whether I say anything or not. Just making excuses, huh? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say those words out loud, but Yoru picks them up anyway. About what? I just felt like I've wronged you in some way, Sayako. But I'm kinda sad, since I don't know what it is. She's being a bit too conscientious. You didn't do anything wrong, Yoru. It's getting late. There's nobody else on the streets but us. I'll do my best. Our conversation isn't quite lining up, and neither are our footsteps. That doesn't stop even as we approach the plaza. I'm walking ahead of Yoru, but my slow pace slows down even more, and Yoru overtakes me. I stop in place. I look at a certain something. Huh? What's wrong? I step up the pace and catch up to Yoru. Oh, uh, nothing. The thing I was looking at, the missile, is missing Yoru's name. I'm a little bit jealous, but I feel like something's off about it. We keep walking back on the way home. And as we walk, I think to myself, what would she want? Maybe I can just give the place to her, that's an option. You there, Sayako? Yoru speaks up without turning around. I'm here, you can hear my footsteps, can't you? Please stay with me, okay? My chest is in pain, but the air I breathe in is so clean I feel both painful and cleansed. All in all, I feel satisfied. If only I could go to sleep and just die, right now. But that's impossible. I can't die if I'm not even alive. I'll try. There's no real meaning to this conversation. There's no real meaning to us, either, I'm sure. Just meaningless ghosts walking around a town. Just meaningless ghosts walking around a ghost town near the break of dawn. We're almost home. Nice! It looks great on you! You're meant for this job! Despite what Pacific is saying, it's obvious that this outfit would look the same on anyone, no matter who's wearing it. She said she'd look for a job that's always short-staffed this time. And this is the result. Salvaging. Searching the garbage heap for usable objects. Yoru and I are dressed in baggy yellow protective suits as we board the salvage truck. I silently curse these protective suits for being so hard to move in. The three other salvagers are all somewhat buff men. We're wearing their spare suits, which is why they don't fit. They keep bowing to Pacifica. Pacifica really is amazing at what she does. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but she does it well. We're sectioned off at the back of the truck, with the men all sitting in the front on a bench seat. Nobody says a word. I can more or less see the backs of the men's heads through the window, but they're not even moving a muscle. They seemed quite polite when the influential Pacifica, but I get the feeling they'll be strict with newcomers like us. Suddenly, Yoru speaks up. Um, excuse me, can I ask a question? What? If you want us to explain, we can do it when we're there. Where does this bus go? Where does this bus go, you say? Things get awkward real quick. It's the awkward calm before the storm. Um, you see, she's, uh... That's so funny. Did you hear what she said? 
I heard, I heard. Where does this bus go? That's hilarious. Good one. <laughs> you know, pleasure to work with you today. Yeah, no problem. We'll make splendid scrappers out of you. You mean super scavengers, right? Our official title is officially licensed garbage collectors. Ugh, oh, that's so boring. Okie dokie, artichoke. We'll be up some real scrappy scrappers. You sure are a hoot. I can do nothing but watch as the scene unfolds in front of me. Actually, I'm not even sure if I can do that. She's just too dazzling. She's amazing. Simply amazing. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's clear that they're all enjoying themselves. After some banter, we arrive at a place that's quite memorable to me in a certain sense. The truck parks by the fence surrounding the giant garbage dump on the outskirts of town. Baskets? I blink a few times before I realize what the man means. He's referring to the baskets made out of aluminum or some other metal that were loaded into the back of the truck with us. Okay. Yor and I take the baskets as we hop out of the back of the truck. I'm already starting to get tired of the baggy suit's lack of mobility. If we end up sticking with this job, I hope the first thing we do is get properly fitting suits. As I think that to myself, I tumble and let out a weird yelp. Are you okay, uh, ninja girl? I'm okay. Thanks to that little tumble, I snap back to my senses. Um, do we need these suits? It's hard to move in them. Yeah, but... These are to protect against weird chemicals or radiation or something, right? But none of that really matters since I'm a ghost, after all. It'll still hurt, you know, and uh, it still kind of sucks to die even if you know you'll come back to life, doesn't it? Come back to life? I'm not sure that's the right phrase. We're not alive to begin with. I mean, we're ghosts. So it's weird to say we'll come back to life. Well, you've got a point, but this suit's too baggy to move around in, so it'll be hard to do work in it. So, do I have to wear it? I mean, we've been here in normal clothes before and nothing's happened to me. I'm sure they're just being overly cautious. In that case, I'll take mine off, too. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is what it means to be a man. Whoa. Well, miss, if you insist, that's perfectly fine. Do the work you want the way you wanna. That's just how life is. I guess we can agree there. In other words, when life deals you cards, you gotta... Huh. Sorry, ma'am. Um, uh, just be careful. Yes, sir. Work is just about what I expected. With basket and tongs in hand, we fish around the garbage for anything that seems useful. The garbage is piled up haphazardly, but nothing feels dirty. Nothing's rotten, and there's not much of a smell. I'm starting to think that maybe this town doesn't even have the bacteria and stuff necessary for rot to form. After all, this town only has ghosts in it. And this garbage heap only has things that aren't living. This is where all the town's resources originate from, and this is where all the town's resources eventually return. One of the men's... One of the men instructs me to search for electrical appliances. My instincts somehow tell me that there's no good finds at my current location, so I distance myself from Yoru and the men who are searching through garbage within a set perimeter. It's not because I can't handle hearing Yoru chatting and laughing with the men. At least, I don't think it is. I suddenly notice a car windshield at my feet. Oh yeah, what about that car? Do things lost outside of town come back here too? Did that car get buried somewhere in this garbage pile after it exploded? If so, did it come back as individual parts or as a whole car? If it came back as parts, then maybe this windshield belongs to it. As I think that to myself, I notice there's a microwave oven caught underneath the windshield. Wonder why I didn't notice it earlier. I lift up the windshield and hurl it somewhere. I hear the sound of glass shattering. I found a microwave. I rush back to the scavengers to report my find. It's my first big find of the day. Oh, was that sound you, Sayako? Yes, the microwave was shielded by a windshield, so I threw it into the wind. <laughs> I fail at forcing a laugh, so it comes out more like a spasm. The men try to say something, 
but it looks like they're speechless, so I can't help but groan. I'm just not good with this kind of stuff. I feel like I've felt this way before, several times even. Have I never tried to improve? Or am I just unable to? I feel like it's too late for me to even know at this point. Once the truck's filled with buckets of garbage, or rather, I suppose I should call them resources, now, it makes several stops in the outskirts of town. Scavenger offices and workshops, I presume. Today was the best. Thanks, miss. You're welcome. So what do you say, you two? Want to work with us? It's tough work, but we're happy to have you on board if you want. Sorry, but I don't think I'm come out for this. My apologies. Thank you for your time. I see. It feels like they already knew what my answer would be, but they had to pretend they didn't. They have to uphold a pre-established harmony, I suppose. So what about you, miss? Join us. We can play I Spy as we collect garbage. <laughs> Hey, cut it out. It's her decision. These guys are chill AF. I'm a little nervous. I'm sure you're is all for it. And if she joins them, that means our relationship will change. Which is what I thought I wanted, but now I'm not so sure. I take a deep breath and look at Yoru from the side. If Sayako's not in, then neither am I. Yoru. I have to say something. I want to object. I want to tell her that she's making the wrong decision. I'm sorry. Your apologizes, but for what? Why? I just don't know. I don't understand. Are you sure? Yeah, I agree. Are you sure? Hmm? Pipe down, you. Sorry, but I've made up my mind. I'll come visit. Be sure to turn the heater on. And with that, Yoru starts walking, and she grabs my wrist. And with that, Yoru starts walking. She grabs my wrist with surprising force coming from her slender arm. I manage to keep up with her despite stumbling a bit. Sayako, the night's still young, so why don't we go visit Miss Pacifica's house? We have to report to her after all. I nod my head vaguely, perhaps because I'm considering suggesting one more time that Yoru could work there. But I'm sure she has no intention of doing that, so there's no point in saying anything about it. You were so good at that job. You looked like you were having so much fun. So why did you reject their offer? I don't get it. I end up saying something vague instead. We should apologize to Pacifica when we see her, huh? I guess so. In the end, I don't say what I wanted. Ooh, the tension is rising. <laughs> <laughs> 